pee a few times, so I wasn't, uh, I didn't say, I, I, I was standing in the lobby listening to you laugh, which was uh, very pleasing. So. All right, I'm going to come around with the microphone if people have questions, but I will start the ball rolling. Um, we were talking about this before the screening, the casting of this film. I mean, you've got an Oscar nominee, a former Doctor Who, any other geeks in the audience? Yeah. yeah. And also a star of Broad Church and many other things. Uh, you've got a world-renowned comedian and actor, three of the most remarkable child actors I have ever seen in the film. <laughs> So, uh, my best users, uh, to tell us about the casting process. I mean, it's an incredible cast. Um, well, with, I mean, well, I'll, I'll talk about the adults and the children, definitely, I think. Um, I mean, well, with Bill, Billy Connolly, our problem was what would we have done if he hadn't said yes? Because, as you can imagine, that part, there is probably nobody else in the world who could have played that. Um, you know, we were looking for a someone who's, who's got that sort of power as an actor, but can also improvise, you know, be fun with the children. Um, and he's Scottish. <laughs> and, um, yes, you know, so, so we, we had to do a little bit of arm twisting with Billy. I think Andy Hamilton uh, threatened to tell him into his house if he didn't say yes. But amazingly that worked, so rather than getting a sort of uh, a protection order against us, he agreed to be in the film. Um, and I think um, David and David and Rodman were, were both actors we hadn't worked with, but had always wanted to. Um, so, uh, you know, that was, well, again, you know, it was obviously fantastic for us when they said yes. Um, they, you know, those, those, uh, you know, those Rolls Royces that you don't often get to drive. Um, you know, that was fantastic. Uh, and with the children, it was, it was very different. Um, I mean, we deliberately, I think, wanted children who hadn't had a lot of acting experience, because sometimes at acting school, we sort of drive the acting out of them, I think. Um, and we met, well, most of the children in London, I think, <laughs> um, over a long period. And there's a lot of remarkable kids. Um, I mean, we just, um, for a long time, we didn't actually get them to act as such. We sort of improvised with them and got, them to, got to know them. Um, because, of course, you know, with, with, with children, it's a seven-week shoot, and it's no good else. After four weeks, they say, well, I've had a good time, and I want to go home now. Um, so we got to know them and their, and their parents, and, um, and, and we sort of worked with them. Um, we would never, we never showed them the script. They never knew what the, they, they never got a script to read or anything like that. Um, we would just tell them the scene, the sort of the succession of lines or the, the argument, just just before we started filming. Um, either Andy or I would, would, would just just talk to them. Um, and I think that way, you know, they would say our lines, and they sometimes put them in, in their words, um, which, you know, they, they, they were fabulous children, you know, see that they, you know, I think it did come across naturally. Absolutely. Um, I'll throw it out one more, and then we'll throw it open to the audience. Uh, there is a character in the film that doesn't have any lines, and that's the Scottish Highlands. Um, shooting on location really, it informs the film so much. Could you talk a bit about the, uh, the opportunity just to shoot there and where the story obviously takes place? Oh well, yeah, no, I'm glad you said that. Cause, uh, the, there were various times when we were trying to get the film together for the budget where people said, why don't you get a subsidy to go to Yorkshire or, um, or Northern Ireland or uh, you know, <laughs> Wales or I don't know. You know, all these places, but we, we always, and you know, I always wanted to, to, to shoot in Scotland um, because I think it is, I mean, of course, you've got, you know, you've got a vast area of wild landscape here, uh, but uh, in Britain it's the only kind of truly wild area, I think, and it was, you know, we wanted it to be, you know, as Rob said, a, a, a character in the film somewhere where the children could go and, 
and, and, and cut loose. Um, I mean, most of it is actually shot near uh, near Glasgow, um, but when we got two we could afford two weeks on that on that wonderful beach, um, so uh, obviously we tried to squeeze every every ounce out of the uh, out, out of that location. It, 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 you know, it's just great. It's a great place to go to work in the morning to get up and, 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 and head out there, as you can imagine. And, and it, all those all those times that you, you think, oh, that's uh, that sort of bad continuity. Uh, when the when the weather changed, it, it actually did change that far. So you'd be looking one way and it'd be bright sunshine, the other way the storm coming in. Um, but it, it, it is, um, yeah, it, it is an extraordinary sort of landscape. Yeah, very important. Okay, I'm going to be Phil Donahue. Anybody old enough to remember that reference? <laughs> Got a question down here? Okay, just uh, pass the mic on down. Hi, I'm just wondering, you were talking about working with the children and how you improvise with them and never show the script. And my original question was about how much of the a movie film was improvised and how much, like in terms of the adult actors, how much they improvised and how much they were. Um, we, the adult actors didn't really improvise except when they were when they were working with the children. Um, I mean, it's probably less improvised and more than putting in their own words. I mean, there's um, there's, there's some moments that are, that are entirely improvised. Um, I'm trying to think like that. I mean, like when when the little girl is 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 telling her mum everything that, that, that happened on the, on the beach. Now Harriet has got an amazing memory, so the problem there almost was, was her not sort of remembering everything he said. We had, to, we had to film that before they'd actually been on the beach, that's not even her remembering what happened. So I, I actually deliberately gabbled the list really fast to her, all the things that had happened. And, um, and then she just came up with this fabulous long list of everything that she'd done. I think mean, it was probably about another two minutes there where she, where she kept going. But that's an example where, and, and of course, it also needs a great lot of generosity from the adult actors. Because, I mean, partly you know, they, they're actually acting to kind of bring out the children rather than to be themselves. So they've got to hold back in, in some way. Um, and also with children's hours, um, we get 45 minutes with a uh, four times a day with the children, so you know, which is a sensible regulation because they just get bored and get tired after that. Um, but what it means for the adult actors is, is we shoot for the children first, and then um, to make it doubly hard. And then what happened was either Andy or I would sit down very close to the ground and do our do our version of. Of what the um, of what they had said, because I suppose we kind of knew which bits we were likely to keep. So, so Paul Rosamond and David were were acting with, you know, fifty nine year old men <laughs> with beards. <laughs> so their performance is, is, is more remarkable than you realise. Can I ask one more? I just have a follow up question about uh, acting with uh, working with uh, Rosamond and David and how they were as a team and what they were like on set. Um, <laughs> they were, they were, you know, just very good to work with from our, our point of view. Um, you know, I think they probably have roughly the same kind of attitude to acting. You know, I suppose you sometimes get a difficulty if you were dealing with, you know, if you're dealing with one actor who is, who is very method and one actor who is one of the people who just sort of turns it on. But they, they were both in between, I suppose. Um, but they're... I mean, it, it, what, what was interesting is that you saw things in the edit that you missed for getting a monitor at the time. Those are the shades of meaning and, and, and those little moments that you could put in that you could edit. There's so much going on in their, in their performances. So there's a real sort of depth in there, uh, you know, as well as the comedy. And, 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 the, and I think it's, it's something that's very hard to do uh, for a, a comedy drama because you've got to be. You've got to be funny, but you've got to be completely real and believable. So uh, I think it's, you know, it's underrated in its difficulty as a piece of acting. You know, people tend to win the, 
the Oscar to for some, you know, uh, full-on dramatic performance. But in a way, this form of acting, I think, is, is almost harder. Thank you. children, uh, were, there were a lot of other kids there who were living in, in families that had split up, were splitting up, or were kids, children were worried about splitting up. And I think one idea was that we wanted to, to, to deal with that, but in a comedy. I think you know, it's been dealt with quite a lot in, in, in very serious films. Uh, so that was, that was one starting point. Um, you know, there's also the element of the, of, of the family going back to, to, to Scotland and um, I suppose the, the, the film became more unusual when we added the Viking element. That, <laughs> you know, it, 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 I think at that point we kind of thought, oh, that, that is different, you know, you haven't seen a film like that. But it, it's kind of hard because you, you, you know, you, you're supposed to try ideas and try ideas, and then something just starts to take shape. But I, I think probably what I said was, you know, the starting point. Yeah, Co-writing is, is a fairly common uh, occurrence, but co-directing isn't. How does that work? How did you and Andy split up directing duties? <laughs> well, we don't specialize. It's not like you know one of us is more um, <laughs> behind the camera and it, it sort of was very good because directing is very hard and you think one of you is really knackered so then you know you can be the one that sits and watches the monitor and the other one can be the one that's out front of the actors uh, I think we've known each other a long time which which helps but I mean directing is such a busy job there's so much to, to watch but I think it's actually quite good having two directors. Uh, I mean, I thought what's difficult is, is having people know each other well enough to, to not want to kill each other after two weeks <laughs> on set. Um, maybe not because it's particularly true when you are working with children the way we did with this film, because, um, you know, as I was saying, one of us, just before we're filming, is, 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 is usually, uh, I mean, no particular reason I, I work with Harriet Little Girl and, and, and Andy work with Boy Little Boy uh, would be um, down there talking to them and talking through the scene and then being on set with them. So in, in, in a film like this, um, you know, the, the, the two directors are, are particularly important, I think. Um, but I, I think that the other thing is, you know, you, you miss less. You're always going to miss something when you're filming, but with two of you, you know, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, I've got a on this side of the room. Anybody have a question over here? Okay. It's almost the same. I'd be interested to know um, what was the, one of the hardest scenes to film and why? What length was that you were at? The <laughs> um, hardest film, the hardest scene. Yeah. Well, physically, that. that Final scene where they were doing the, the, the funeral speeches was probably the hardest. Uh, I mean, we've been very lucky with weather in Scotland, um, but it had the biggest sort of midge infestation for about five years. Um, even the locals were wearing the, the, the midge nets. And well, that's why we added the line, because I think if you look carefully at the screen at that point, uh, it's actually sort of pulsating with. <laughs> millions and millions of tiny midges. Uh, and so that was a great credit to, to David and Ben. That, I mean, they, they, were, um, they were kind of being, well, literally eaten as they, as they performed at the very moment. They had midges in their ears, in their noses, everywhere. Um, and at one point, 
Bennett will, I think, ask, can you see them on screen? And we looked at the screen and said, well, we can't really see the screen. <laughs> so there's just this sea of, 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 of black. The, the only upside was that the, the, the mourners at the funeral, um, there was a lot of this going on. <laughs> and, and it looked like grief. So if you want a very realistic reaction, then you let loose six million midges. So physically, that certainly was the hardest. And there goes all the magic. <laughs> Questions over here. This is great, I'm going to lose five pounds tonight. <laughs> Uh, two questions, actually. The first one is, how do you broach the subject of death with the kids? Because it's a hard thing to talk about, and then so they understand it, it's sort of preparation of the ones. And the second one is, the opening sequence, literally in two minutes, we really got to understand the characters in terms of each of their personalities, everything from the little girl the rocks, the two sets of rocks, and so on. Was that something that was uh, worked hard on in terms, in terms of the script or making sure that as an audience, we got to identify with these folks and start to learn. Um, well, on, on the second one, yes, you, you know, that, that, that opening is probably the bit that we rewrote and re-edited the most, you know, because you, you don't want to hang around, you want to be funny, but you need to start telling the story. I suppose that's always the hardest thing, is how you, you know, uh, uh, well, how soon you give out the information. You know, you're obviously trying to hold some things back. But, um, uh, yeah, but we, 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 we changed that quite a lot for the star. Um, the, the opening shot of the rock falling over, um, we needed a sort of very expensive bit of kit um, with a sort of small dolly to pull back. But that was at the point we were getting a bit tight on money, so the um, the director of photography bought a tea tray from Asda for two ninety nine, <laughs> and um, the photographer pulled it, just pulled it back at the right time. It seemed to do the same <laughs> the same trick. In fact, he found his tray. There was a sale halfway through by the by the art department trying to recoup some money, and he found his tray on sale for three ninety nine. So. They were, <laughs> Um, uh, uh, yeah, the, the children, um, you know, as I said, we didn't tell them the story in advance, but you're right, obviously we had to, we had to explain about that. Um, and, I mean, interestingly, the, their reactions, yeah, okay. You know, you didn't know what they were going to react, but they, they seemed very, uh, very matter-of-fact and unfussed about it. Um, which I suppose is, is, is sort of part of the reaction in the film. They are much more matter of fact about, about that than the adults. And one last quick question. Yes. The media, is that real media, or did you have to have actors play that? Well, they were only turning up there. Yes. No, no, we had to, we had to create that, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we, we added to it that we, we, um, we shot one pick up there in a brewery in London, and quite a lot of the media were actually this is great, by the way. I really appreciate you guys with all these questions because I have to interview him tomorrow. <laughs> I'm stealing all of your questions. I'll pull them by giving you completely different answers. Just two things. Um, firstly, I just want to say magnificent. Really well done. writers, and I think we're the sort of writers that um, 
I kind of want to, there's some just like light handing in a script and then you know, walking away. But I suppose we are, are kind of writers who like to see things through. Um, so, apart from that, it's very fun. Uh, that's you know, one reason I think we became directors, that we wanted to complete the process. And, and, and so, that may be a small part of the answer so, you know, of, of why, why we became directors. Now, apparently, some guy named Judah has a question. Well, we know hindsight is 2020. I am curious to know if after creating the film and seeing it so many times, if there's anything that you would change or that you would you wish you had done that you hadn't. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I mean, nothing, you know, there was an element of it that you know, I think we really screwed that up. Um, I don't know, I don't, there's nothing that, you know, I mean, I suppose you see small things in, when, when you watch it that probably nobody else notices that you kind of think, oh, I've done that slightly differently. Uh, but in the end, it kind of, I suppose now it's taken on a kind of reality of its own, and that is just it. Um, so I, I'm sure that many things we could have done better, but I, I just don't look at it that way. Question? Another question over here. I was speaking with uh, Rob before the show about Billy Connolly. And uh, we were wondering about his uh, slightly failing health in his older years now, facing Parkinson's. And you'd mentioned that you really cast the role with him in mind. So I'm wondering if you had discussions with him beforehand, and if he was perhaps uh, reflective on his own life and wanting to edit a few scenes or cast a few scenes slightly differently. Um, well, I mean, he. Um, I mean, we we discovered after the film that. He was um, suffering from from prostate cancer, which um, he didn't even tell anybody during the course of the film. So he'd been diagnosed with that shortly before he started shooting. So, I mean, you know, he, he did say that obviously that um, that was a slightly strange experience for him. I mean, you know, thankfully he's been given the all clear now. Um, but I thought, um, you know, it. It, it showed a, a, a certain character that he just, um, you know, soldiered on without uh, without mentioning this. I think kind of burying people in sand is probably not the ideal treatment for people with prostate cancer. It's okay, you didn't know. <laughs> okay, we have time for a couple more questions. Wait, that. Thing. One of the first questions was about um, the uh, the characters that didn't have any lines, and at first I thought that they would be, ask, be asking about, but no, it was the uh, it was the ostriches. <laughs> I was curious about them, how uh, how they were wound in, and how they became part of it. Uh, the the ostriches. Well, we had to go to the ostriches rather than then uh, bring them to us, um, partly because they're killers. Um, we had. Uh, we um, went to, the, there was only three ostriches in Scotland who were in a safari park near Glasgow, and we had to persuade them to run in front of a large green screen that we put in their, um, uh, their enclosure. Um, and so that's, uh, that is one of the rather, you know, the rare bits of, of CGI in the film, the, the, the ostriches running through. Um, we, had, we had a very, um, we had a terrific, um, young and enthusiastic producer who, who said to one of the, the, the keepers at the park, um, could you just sort of get in there and, and give him a little prod to, to <laughs> um, why have to, it killed me. <laughs> so the, the, the ostriches were probably the deadliest things that we, we dealt with, but they, um, they didn't run very fast, but it's just enough for the, uh, for the CGI to work.
Okay, just a couple more. Somebody, somebody from over here. No? Oh, there's one. Can I find who it with? <laughs> you mentioned that you chose the film in Spain. What was the reaction there? Um, uh, very good. I mean, it, um, it, it, it was filmed with subtitles. Um, it subsequently be released with um, uh, with it being dubbed, um, and uh, apparently they had a lot of trouble dubbing the children, which I would, you know, doesn't entirely surprise me. I think they ended up with two ch real children and one adult doing it. Um, but he got shown at a, a, a festival there, and um, well, it, it, it won the audience award. So that you know, the, it was terrific to think that it would, that it travels. There was one joke that worked better with subtitles. I never quite worked out why that was. And that's probably something I would change. I, I, would, I would redo that joke. Because obviously, if it, if it works better with subtitles, we didn't do that quite right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, one more question. There you go. Um, when you were talking about the uh, working with the children, uh, the girl that played Lottie, I, I swear, I was looking at her and I could have sworn that she was actually Rosamund Pike's daughter. I mean, not just not just her 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 look, but her expression. Did did the two of them spend a lot of time together at all, or was that just just really good casting? Um, I wish I could say it was really good casting. I think we just we just picked the the best girl, um, and uh, I mean, obviously, we thought we'd kind of get away with them all as children, uh, the children of that pair. And I mean, they spent time together, but not a particular, particular amount. I think that that um, that I'm afraid it's probably just coincidence that they that they they. they I mean, uh, Andy and I are another. That I think, just mannerisms that I I saw in her that. that were so similar, it was very eerie, it was interesting. Well, possibly, I mean, there, there possibly was some sort of mirroring going on there with, with, with her. I mean, I mean, interestingly, she, she was 11, we did treat her much more like one of the adult actors. Uh, you know, having said that the others, we, we uh, you know, kind of tried to make it part of the game, really, rather than being one of the films that, that she was um, very grown up, and, and you could actually, and, and, and with media, you know, she would really take notes in the same way as uh, now that adult actress. So she was, she was very clever. Um, but uh, I, I hadn't noticed it to, to that extent. So, but I don't know what. It'll give me something to look at next time I watch the film. Okay, we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank on behalf of all of you, our guest, Guy Jenkin, coming all the way over here and sharing this wonderful film. This is the end of this festival. And thank you so much for being here.